So, guys, welcome to Full Studio. You're now looking at the full project file for No Return Reboot out now everywhere as part of uh, Ophelia's Advent Volume 5. For those of you who don't know what Advent is, it's basically the equivalent of Rushdown's New Colors, for example. So a great starting point for new artists coming into Ophelia uh, and a stepping stone for later standalone releases on the label. So there it is. Uh, now, before we begin with the actual walkthrough, I thought it'd be interesting to give you guys a little backstory as to how this all came to be. Uh, so five years ago, <laughs> five years ago in 2017, I released uh, No Return, which was one of my first attempts at a more cinematic twist to my music. Uh, but it wasn't without its flaws because then again, we're talking 2017, I'd like to think my music has evolved a little bit since, uh, but still a nice concept nonetheless. And then a year later in 2018, I released a, a down-tempo VIP of No Return, which to be completely honest with you is a little more forgettable in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, the way I see it, it's the kind of song that was a very high concept, um, a concept which at the time I didn't really have the expertise and resources to fully realize it the way that I had pictured it in my head. So. Uh, fast forward to 2021, and I had a bit of an epiphany. Uh, I asked myself, what if I revisited the world of No Return? Not remake the same song, but take the concept, the atmosphere, the mystique of No Return and build something new with it. That's why I named it specifically a reboot and not a remake or a No Return 2. <laughs> and for quite a while, I had benched uh, the idea in favor of all the projects. But earlier this year, I finally sat down and said to myself, okay, it's time to give No Return another go. And finally fully realized the vision that I had all those years ago. Uh, and then I remembered uh, a VIP that AU5 made of a song, Blossom, so Blossom of VIP. And it was a one drop structure. So like a long establishing intro followed by a longer than usual drop and then an ambient uh, long outro as well. And Knowing the nature of what I wanted to do, the reboot concept, I thought it was appropriate to try out that one drop structure idea. And so here we are. <laughs> so after I finished the song, my initial thought was there's no way I'm going to get a reboot from a song I made five years ago on, on a label. This is almost for sure going to be uh, a self-release. And at one point I made cover art for it. If you want to see that, uh, you can go see the self-release version of the cover art that I made in case the song ended up being a self-release on my Discord server in the art channel. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> this is almost for sure going to be a self-release. That's what I thought. Uh, but then uh, around the same time and with the help of some very kind people, you know who you are, uh, I was introduced to the ANR uh, staff at Ophelia. And so they asked for a few demos. Uh, I sent about three IDs, I think, and to my surprise, they took No Return Reboot out of all the three. And so that was a very proud moment for me, the fact that they wanted to believe in Modus and in this song and, 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 what, it means for, and, and what it means for me, how it relates to the New York Protocol series with those callbacks to NYP6 and the Protocol saying the cycle begins anew. And also uh, the humans re uh, reminiscing the lines from the original No Return saying, they said we would never be the same, that we would never return. Because the original five years ago said, you will never be the same after this experience. Uh, and then uh, the UKF feature happened, just lots of things to check off my bucket list, uh, my bucket list of all-time goals. So I remember being in a hardware store, basically like Spanish Home Depot, when I got the email that <laughs> my song would be on UKF, and I was just trying to hide my sheer happiness while looking for tubes for my air conditioner. <laughs> so yeah, huge thank you to everybody involved. Uh, that being said, and assuming you've already heard the song throughout the past week, it is time to dive deep into what makes this one-off revival what it is. So, yeah, starts off with some uh, effects. Right, so already in those seven to eight seconds, there was quite a bit going on. For instance, uh, I took the, uh, the original uh, audio file for No Return and I reversed uh, the intro or the outro, I think I did. Uh, this is the outro, I believe. So if we, if we are to take the, the original, 
So many links. Thank you so much for the resub. Tier one. Uh, and uh, that's a gift from Sargro. Thank you so much, Sargro, for the gift. And uh, so, yeah, let's have a look at what the original sounded like because uh, you're going to be n noticing some pretty uh, um, cool similarities between this and the reboot. So, so obviously, it's, it's going to be in the same key. Obviously, it sounds a lot more 2017, right? But it, you can, just right off the bat, you can notice it, it has the same like vibe, atmosphere, like dark, mystique, you know? My vocals were a lot more corny uh, back then. Uh, I I had like <laughs> I just could not make uh, could not make them sound uh, believable. They just sounded they just sounded like the fakest, the cheesiest thing. But I still wanted to somehow retain uh, the what the original said, so that's why I had the dialogue say they said we would never be the same. CPU moment right there. As you can see, there's those uh, stabs. Dun, dun, dun. That was uh, the main motif for the first drop. Uh, and then uh, I went on to remake that uh, sound from scratch and, and I ended up using it in the buildup. So yeah, there's there's some similarities uh, going on, but yeah, let's start from the beginning. Uh, as I said, there's that reversed outro from the original, but then there's also some more effects here and there. There's another instance of the original. Uh, in this case, it's just normal, like no, not reversed, but it's the it's the intro of of, of the original. It now serves as an effect for the intro of the new one. So it's like old and new combined, right? Like they are. They're coming together. And then there's just some ambience, like foley's and stuffs. Like that, like ambience, computer noise, and then there's like all these agent glitch pads. That's all agent. This is agent as well. I believe I high passed a bunch of these. Yeah. So yeah, like unprocessed, it, it might sound different. But yeah, uh, and then there's also a lot more layers from Boom Library, I believe. Those are like some servo movements on like machine uh, sci-fi. Yeah. And then I believe these are uh, sound effects from the supercomputer of Code Lyoko. So yeah. And then these are uh, some more Boom Library sounds. And another boom library sound that uh that I believe I ended up not using. Yeah, I didn't use that in the end because it's muted, as you can see. And then this is just a sub drop. So it sounds like that. It's time. CPU moment, bro. Don't worry, we have the power of F12. It's time. Oh yeah. I forgot the buffer length is like super, super low for some reason. We can bump it up to 1024, no problem. It's time. Fixed. All right, so for the intro, it's just a drone. The drone actually, I believe it's, uh, 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 let's see. It has two octaves. So it's basically uh, two oscillators and they're and they're one octave apart, as you're seeing here. So this is the low one, and this is the high one. And they make for this like much, much fuller, much mm, nice pad. And then it has this like bit of high pass going on. So it sounds like that meow. Like being faded in effect, right? And then we have all these Astra agent impacts. Yes, I used a bunch of agent samples here. And I used some more Foley here, but I believe this is like heavily sampled. 
or at least it had like some sort of filter. Yeah, it had a filter somewhere. Anyway. So we just have this impact. Do you do any processing like pitch shift on the boom library sample? So these are just in it. Uh, some of them are unprocessed, uh, but others are just like really low in volume and they're like OTT and they have some EQing to remove certain frequencies that I didn't like. Um, maybe some others have been pitch shifted. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but yeah, most of these are in it because they sound pretty good. Like boom library effects are like really high quality. They're like movie quality because that's what they were that's what they were designed for. They're like movie sample packs. Then we have a processor glitch uh, effects here. And and then a bunch of uh, things that uh, I took from the original as well. As you can see that um, I took uh, the ARP melody from, from the original. Na -na 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 and I reordered it out quite a bit as well as delayed it. So you get that effect. And then uh, some plugs. Na na na, DGA. And this sample will be an Ultranova sample pack, so watch out for that. If it isn't already in Hypernova, I, I can't quite remember. And then this is, uh, I took this from, uh, a track that I made as part of my like cinematic music exercises like in my free time sometimes I I make uh, I just like to produce like cinematic film scores and I took one uh, I took one of these and I pulse stretch it so it would be like four uh four uh, four hours long and then from those four hours there were like the the ambient parts uh, that had like just some quiet uh, violins and like horns and all that stuff they tend to produce some really cool, like, drone sounds for intros. See that? That's a, uh, that's a soloist vocal. And they're filtered out. And the filter will be opening up uh, as the buildup goes on. See that? Hmm. So yeah, and and then there's these vocals that I recorded that they basically said, well, they said we would never be the same, that they that we would never return. And uh, I muted them so I could make an instrumental version of this uh, because uh, there's ExoFest uh, and I'm playing in ExoFest tomorrow or no, it wasn't even for ExoFest. It was for the Ophelia guest mix. Uh, I rendered out an instrumental version of the intro, so instead of these vocals, I could talk over it and say, "Hey, my, and and say, hey, my name is Paul. Uh, uh, my name is Paul A. K. Modus, and here's my guest mix for Feel Records." Blah blah blah, and uh, that's why I had these muted. Uh, but but normally they just sound like this. And then there's this, and then there's this automation that's going to control uh, the volume of all um, of all the rest of the instruments. Are you really playing tomorrow if the mix is already done? ExoFest, dude, a Minecraft festival, all the mixes are already done. <laughs> when you uh, when you go out there in, on the Minecraft stage, you're just like jumping around, but the mix is like already done. So this is going to dog the volume of the entire instrumental uh, so the vocals can come through. And the vocals have basically like two layers. And then this. That's like the, the main. So this has a frequency shifter. I believe there was also a manipulator involved in the process, but then I bounced it and I got rid of the manipulator and then I had to high pass this uh, a bunch. Uh, and yeah. End result. And now we're getting into the nitty gritty of stuff. You have that, uh, those plugs coming in.
Okay, so let's break down what's happening here. Uh, this is a pluck uh, that I made in Dune, I believe. Yeah, there is. So the preset that uh, that I took this off of was a thousand pluck AC. And yeah. And then uh, it basically has a disperser, frequency shifter, EQ, uh, delay, crystallizer, soothe, and then a free balance to control the volume. Uh, as the buildup went on and things got louder, I had to turn this down to make way for, for the super sauce. Uh, so basically, if I turn all of this off, the raw uh, sound from Dune sounds like this. With a disperser, with a frequency shifter, It has like the tiniest, the tiniest amount. Oh, and yeah, uh, when this comes into effect the most is uh, at the end. That's it. So when, when the buildup ends, that's why, uh, yeah. Uh, why do I hear the lick? Because this is technically an incomplete lick. Na, 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 it would be. No, 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 no. So, like... And then... But instead of that C, there's that A. So, basically, what I did is... Uh, I took uh, these uh, six notes. No, 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 no. Right? And then, what I could have done... What I could have done uh, was just uh, take the cell and repeat it in 4-4. Four, four. So like this. But the problem with this is that the notes would all be the same in every single measure. That's gonna get boring pretty fast. So what I did basically here uh, is uh, add uh, like take one beat away. Na 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 So uh, on each downbeat, this would land on a different note. So in this downbeat, it's an A, but now it's an E here, and now it's a G here. So like each measure, there's something different uh, going on. So like each uh, measure has different notes because it's like landing somewhere else. Right? It's like this. Uh, yeah, like a poly polymeter thing. So it, it would be a three four arp uh, in a four four song, right? But the tempo of the song is still one two three four run two three right. Right? It, it, it's like this like polymeter kind of thing, yeah. That was just to make the whole thing more interesting so that on each, so that, so like each downbeat would land on a different note. Uh, and that would make things a little bit more interesting. Uh, and we, we, we haven't finished uh, going over the effects, so this is uh, the EQ that I did for it. Basically made, made it much thinner uh, sounding. Because uh, the the thickness of it uh, of this whole section is really in the super sauce and and the drone bass, so I just need this to be on top, right? And then there's a delay for like some more uh, space, and this is gonna activate uh, later on. And then we have a crystallizer for those like tip bits in the background, and then a little bit of soothe. For the for the later part uh, when this opens up, that's what it's taking off, right? Some of that uh, metallic rubbish, and then uh, this arp eventually branches out into like uh, cooler melodies. Na 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 na. And what I did is uh, I split the notes into uh, from uh, one eighth to one sixteenth. So it so there will be like two of each like that and the same like polymeter thing 
And then uh, I just changed the ARP uh, for each chord to suit the chord that was playing below. See how uh, it goes from being in the lower octave and it slowly evolves. It slowly goes up until eventually it reaches the, the same thing that I was doing before, but now an octave higher. So it's like, uh, like morphing and evolving, right? Till it eventually reaches its goal. Na 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 na. And so that's it for the ARPs. Uh, the Super Sauce. It's just Super Sauce, all right? They have a bit of a filter. If I play them in the playlist, they have this. I also did a pitch automation, so it does. This is the pitch bend here. And then the pitch bend happens at the same time as uh, a cutoff, like as a fade in on the filter. Wow. And then I'm teasing the super sauce a little bit more every now and then to see. Hey, not yet, right? <clears throat> and then it goes up steadily. Uh, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. Not yet. But we're getting there, right? And and then yeah. Just uh, doing the, su the super sauce to suit the chord that's playing here in the drone bass. It's the same octave drone from before. So this is D, uh, F, G. And then it has this sub drop here. And then at the same time as the sub drop is happening, I'm opening up the, the filter on the, on the deep bass as well. So it does. It's going to open up, but at the same time going down in uh, going down in pitch, but the filter is opening up. So it's kind of like this contrast. Oh yeah, and we also have some bass arps here in transistor bass. Bum ba 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 bum ba dum. They're here. There it is. It's just a bass preset in transistor bass. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, unsorted. There it is. Transistor bass, laser happy. It's a nice preset for like cinematic uh, bass plugs, right? So, so we go from that super dominant to that dominant and then eventually just sub drop and like reverb, like total chaos. So like total chaos uh, for the end of the intro. And then just some pads to support uh, this. And then we also have some sounds from the original. Those are the vocals uh, from the original, some glitch effects as well. You do Latin music? No, I uh, I don't, but I, I review any kind of music, so. Save your tune for later though. Submissions are closed as of uh, now. They will open later after this breakdown. Oh yeah, and uh, in addition to the to the transistor bass here, we also have a layer that's basically an AU5 accent bass, right? I, I did add some delay and auto pan onto it. So yeah, it this makes things a little bit more uh, more rhythmic, right? As opposed to like so droney and ambient y. This adds right. And then uh, throughout this, uh, there are some choirs. Na, na, na. Come on, say it. So this is, uh, um, I believe, a choir and a violin with a crystallizer, and then I just use Faturator on it to really distort it. Right? 
And then there's also like a noise downlifter here to add some more noise to that. And then there's both uh, a sitar and a piano and the sitar actually bounced. And, and that's doing one of the melodies of, of the original. Na, 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 And the piano as well. And that's all while the pluck is happening, while the pads are, are happening. And as for the rest of, as for the drums, it's just claps with reverb. and a bunch of claps and hats. And eventually the cinematic uh, impacts kick in. Crash huge, reverse, that punch, and then into the actual verse. CPU moment. So let's get into the cinematic verse. So this is, this is all over, right? The CPU can't keep up, that's okay though. And then we also have this. Uh, this is from, from Neo Protocol 6. That's what uh, adds the like subtle ties to, to the Neo Protocol series. Cause like uh, the humans are gonna face the protocol and there's no return from that battle. There's no, there's, uh, if you walk into that war, there's a, uh, you, you're reaching a point of no, uh, of, of no return. You can't hold back now. You can't step back now. You have to fight the protocol, right? And how to make lasagna? Welcome. Do you make? Uh, do you know how to make lasagna? Though? And this part, I'm not even going to bother. This is too much contact for this laptop while I'm streaming. It it doesn't even play right when I'm not streaming. So. <laughs> I'm not even gonna bother. I'm just gonna play uh, the layers one by one, but yeah, just know that this track doesn't, it, it just cannot keep up, all right? Uh, so there are some Foley effects. There's a reverse piano happening here. And this goes into the drone here. Na, 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 na. So it's basically an ascending scale of D minor. It's just the D minor scale. Na, 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 And then eventually it reaches the cadence. So it's like super dominant, dominant, and then tonic. So this is six, five, one would be the cadence. Na, na. So it goes from na, 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 and then na, 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 dun, dun, right? For that like five, one cadence. So there's a bunch of contact going on. And I believe we worked on the section live here on stream, uh, a few months back. Disc, please read. You know what? I might as well uh, bring down the, the PPQ. Let's do that, actually. PPQ down to like 48. Might result in a loss of data. Yeah, but like, I'm just gonna save the project as a low PPQ version, don't worry. Let's try that now. Aha! So this is where I did the how to uh, route contact properly uh, video on YouTube, which came from a live stream. And this is just the orchestration that I did. Uh, uh, violins usually have, uh, have an ostinato. Uh, so uh, just like... Staccato uh, notes, so so has na 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 na, and then eventually they they stick their head out and do that na 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 na. Then, as you can see, I tweaked the the velocities to get what I wanted, and then there's uh there's also uh bass strings here. And then uh, here, uh, there's some, uh, there's more violin layers, but these are different. Uh, these are repetition layers, I believe. So 
When you play them, as you can see, when you play a note, they automatically play 16th repetitions, uh, like this. Like that. Um, I'm not even like doing staccato, so yeah. Uh, are the violins symphonic string ensemble? Uh, the violins are, let me uh, have a look at this, orchestra general. Uh, so the drums are damage too, uh, and, uh, and action strikes. Uh, the horns are Forzo, uh, and Metropolis Arc 1. Uh, the staccato strings are cinematic studio strings. These have like the best staccato strings of any library that I've tried personally. Uh, the low sustain strings are also Metropolis Arc, and uh, the, uh, the spiccato strings are from String Ensemble. That's from Native Instruments themselves, and then the choir, uh, then the female choir is also from Metropolis Arc. So there's just like two, two or three libraries involved in the whole orchestra. And then layered with these violins are, uh, is a choir. <laughs> Doing that like ascending, na 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 na. So it's like the the same four notes, but then an octave higher, and then an octave higher, right? So it's like na 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 na, and then again na 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 na, and then again na 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 na. But it's like uh, three ascending octaves, right? And then uh, in the meantime, these uh, chords are like. They have like that super dominant, dominant, and that's what helps build the tension there. These notes are building up, and it's that dominant, right? Uh, all right, that's the violin, and now I want to focus on some other sounds. I recreated the ARP from the original. Uh, using C uh, using serum. This is basically a, a wavetable, like sh like straight out ripped off of Massive, so I could recreate the original sound used in in No Return. And I basically just uh, redid the melody by ear. And Zetek, if that's how you pronounce your name, you're now human. Welcome to Motors Live. Let's honk the automaton. <laughs> This song is really difficult for the automaton. And Diamond Planet, what's up? Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to Most Live. It's so nice to see you around, man. <laughs> Round of applause for you, and uh, let's dust you off, man. <laughs> it's just so hard to play this. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's realistically impossible to play No Return Reboot on on this thing. Uh, I would like to see you try. If you have an automaton, I dare you to play No Return Reboot. <laughs> uh, welcome you two to the chat. All right, uh, and then we have some pianos layered uh, as well. Which, by the way, this is also the same melody that appears uh, in the, in the melodic break uh, of like the the ending, uh, the drop ending. Na, 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 na. So yeah, this is like already alluding to the end, to the very end of the track. So it's like some uh, setups and payoff uh, happening here. And then there's some choirs that are also going to be used later. These are just bounced. And then some more layers. Evil God Bram. Because this is exactly what you would expect a sample called Evil God Bram to sound like. And then these are just repitched according to need. And, th and then we have some more bass blocks. And then we have some horns. So we have uh, a bass layer. And then we have a melody layer. Right.
And then we have bass strings. Basically just doing the bass and then the drone bass doing the same. Na, 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 na. All right, same thing. Bye, Sour Girl, have a good one. And then there are some uplifters here. Build tension again. <laughs> and let's get to some drums. These are some Xylent perk loops that I like chopped around to make the rhythm that I wanted. And then these also have a glitch two in them to make them sound lo-fi distorted. And then they also have some tape stop, retrigger, modulator, and like stretcher thrown around. Make it sound a little bit more uh, different and random. These add the cyberpunky technological aspect to what would otherwise be a fully orchestral arrangement. Uh, there's some crowd noise for uh, added background uh, filler. Some crash uh, cymbals. From a cashmere pack that he definitely did not rip off, uh, whose uh, samples he definitely did not straight uh, straight out rip off of a contact library. And some more dubstep symbols this time, just to add the like high-end uh, hits. Then we have some sampled cinematic impacts or added impact, but the bulk of the drum work is in the contacts, is in the damage too and the action strikes. So the, uh, the, the action strikes are really just doing the like really uh, strong impacts. So these are the hits only. And then damage two is doing this. The, the bulk of the drum work is in, in the damage two. But then the action strike just adds that additional layer of punch. And uh, that's it. You rock, laptop. You go. I, I'm not even. I'm not even gonna pretend that this uh, that this can go smoothly. Some more uh, arps reminiscing the uh, the original. I believe the sample is taken sh straight out of Prism. Yeah, it's just been uh, high passed, like filtered. But yeah, this is a break from uh, my song with Sharks Prism. So yeah, like recycling a lot of sounds from the past in ways that mm, we would never think possible. And some arps. I believe this is from uh, either Supernova or Hypernova. Can't quite remember. And then we finally get into the build-up where we start to see uh, some more, uh, you know, <laughs> We start to see some more of that electronic uh, vibe. So this is basically the growl from uh, the original uh, remade uh, from scratch. This is bounced, but I can't quite remember what I used to do this. I think it was Vital or Serum, can't quite remember, but it was probably one of those. Pretty sure, pretty sure that was the Astro Realm and not Supernova, is it? because it has the exact naming scheme that a sample of mine would have. This is from Supernova. I just used it in the Astro Realm. Yeah, so yeah. So anyway, we have this. And then we have some uh, layers here, right? These are from a pack called Laniakia Sounds Atmospherica 2. It just has a sick pad. Mmm, spicy. And then I just uh, repitched that to match D. And I also EQ'd it some to like very, very heavily boost the, the high end. And then there's also this uh, thing that I made with Moodle. Moodle is like a spectral resonator. Uh, it looks like uh, this. And I haven't even registered it yet. That 
that that just tells you how much I've used it since I reinstalled Windows. But yeah, it it looks like this. This is basically a spectral resonator, and you can do some pretty cool stuff with this, like metal like metalizing a pad, and, and, and it sounds like this. Pretty cool. And then there's some crystallized arps being reversed. I believe this is from Hypernova. And then these are samples taken from, from New Protocol 4, so we're already uh, seeing more of that uh, NYP series uh, ties. See that? Like, improve. Engage. If you've listened to NYP4, you know what, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, these are samples from, from NYP4. And then there's, uh, these are uh, the original, uh, these are like the, the raw source samples that I, that I used to uh, bounce this. So yeah. And then just, uh, we, we move on to the dubstep sub now. So we've had the deep, uh, like, detuned saw wave drone, and now we're actually moving into the sine wave plus square plus saw, saw, uh, saw base that I usually use. And then some dubstep drums. You know. Very standard. We're getting those plucks again. And these are mangled phaser samples, I believe, from Hi Hypernova. So yeah. So yeah, like a lot of this is just m my own samples. And and that's what I mean with, with my sample packs. You can greatly speed up your workflow and, and all that kind of nonsense that, that I usually say. Well, this is pretty much a good use case for those samples. Some more uh, boom samples. So yeah, like once, uh, uh, like right now, I have like three sample packs made. The third one's coming next month. Uh, and just having like a thousand plus of your own samples means you get to do this. <laughs> Most of these are my own samples, but like uh, I made it, uh, some time ago, so that means I can just drop them in now and save myself a ton of production time, and I can just get to what matters, which is the composing part of it. How much is it going to be? Same as Hypernova is right now, and when Ultranova comes out, Hypernova is getting a permanent price drop, so yeah, watch out for that. It's going to be pretty cool. So let's enable the rest of the stuff. Basically, a uh, filtered snare. Nothing too fancy. And this near has uh, a pitch automation. And the clap is doubled. So you get the like back to back feeling. And then uh, the instrumental is just uh, like all the things building up. So, so basically what I did here is I bounced uh, the second half of the first drop. So, like, here. Uh, I bounced that as a single WAV file. And I, and, uh, I filtered that uh, out. And just used it uh, as a uh, build-up bus. That already, uh, that's already going to give you that... Uh, feeling of the drop that's coming, that, that, that sense of setup. I'm already going to set up the, the sounds for the drop later. And some plugs for background. Some more of that metalized Moodle pad. And then some sirens for buildup. And then there's these. <laughs> it's just yo samples. I very rarely use these. These are like a very rare occurrence, but yeah. And then I just... So yeah, just the same sample repeated. 
and then the Scarlet Arp, because no Modus song is complete without the Scarlet Arp. You know, and then there's a glass break here. Right, and with the drums. This is the vocoded, uh, this is like the bassy layer, and then, and then like the more tonal, uh, part of it. So you get both like a bassy, uh, line and then the actual tonality of the vocal speaking. And these are all the layers th that I had to go through to get to to get to this so yeah pretty cool <laughs> Lex Jupiter with a uh, with a tier one gift to Hexateron Lex Jupiter thank you so much enjoy your sub Hexateron <laughs> all right now now we're moving to the part that all of you were waiting for I hope a drop <laughs> Another gift to Infowler. Infowler, hey, what's up? <laughs> Are you even there, Infowler? <laughs> Welcome. All right, let's keep going. Stop saving yourself. Okay, so as you can see, the drop is mostly samples. But yeah, these are like mostly samples that I've that I already produced a while back, and now I I get to use them and save myself a ton of production time. Like I said. Uh, so yeah, uh, we have a bunch of layers. Uh, this is from another pack. This is from a Neuro DMB sample pack, I believe. So, uh, so, so it's from a company called 20 Hertz. And then we have this. It's just like your box standard sustain bass. And then we have a transient here. And then... So yeah, uh, all these, when you put them together, You get that. And then there's a Womp here. This Womp, I actually um, made it in Vital, I think, or was it Serum? I can't even remember. But this is the source. This is uh, what I used to uh, do this. So yeah, as you can see, it's a much simpler sound at the core, like uh, at the source. So this is Serum, actually. So it's just a square wave detuned with a filter, uh, with an automated filter. Boom. And then I just bounced it and uh, I did a bunch of stuff to it. <clears throat> I did an uh, OTT, uh, an EQ, like just a very, uh, very eventful EQ. And then an OTT, a disperser and a destructor for some of that nice distortion. Uh, and then uh, once all of that uh, happens, we went from this into uh, a much thicker sound. And there it is. So yeah, it's a pretty big transformation. And a bunch more layers here. So, so that's another uh, bounced choir. A pad. Another pad. So we get both pads. And then... And then, uh, what I have is this. I have two of these samples, right? One of them is face inverted. So uh, I've got two layers of the same sample. This one is face inverted and on the left channel, and this one is normal face and on the left channel. So, so it makes for this like very weird stereo effect. Like, so yeah. And they, uh, they seem to be working pretty nicely here. So that's why I use them here. And then there's a razor. And then like a tape start sound. So I probably just took a tape stop and I bounced it and I reversed it so it would sound like a tape start. And then there's a clicky reese from Hypernova, I believe. And then there's a vocoded screech. So this is a screech sample, but I ran it through something else. Can't quite remember what it is. In 2020, what makes someone a criminal? <laughs> in fouling makes you a criminal in 2022. And then, yeah, there's some more samples. And these are all from, from bass jams that I did at some point. I just sat down w uh, one morning and uh, I, 
I started uh, I started recording in Edison, and and then I just started to mess around with a lot of sounds. Uh, and then once you're done, you you stop the you stop the recording, and you end uh, and you end up with a huge like ten minute file full of sounds that you can just pick out the best bits from. And then you just get to resample them and uh, and make filler bases like that. And then these are just some pads. So yeah. And then the choirs change every so often. So now we go from the nun to nun. And, uh, and then what we have here is the same womp. Uh, let's see here. Woom. But then uh, I vocoded uh, it using morph. And you get that. So uh, I vocoded this and I used morph with uh, some super sauce. And you get the harmonics of the super sauce imprinted onto the woom. And you end up with that. Color based woom. And then this is pretty much uh, the same thing here. But now the screech is a little bit higher, so it goes from na 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 to na 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 na. And in fact, it has a pitch automation to signify that. So we go from na 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 na, and it goes up to na 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 na. And then there's some more layers like the arps and the yo. But the most important thing is just that plug in the background na na. And then it goes back down na, and then it settles for a middle ground in that D. So yeah, so yeah, like just in this background, in in this background sound alone, there's like already that sense of direction. It goes up and down, and then settles down for a middle point. And then settles down for the middle. So it's like it's uh, it's it's looking for something, but it's not finding it. And then finally, I found it. Right. And then this is just a uh, reese that I resampled. So yeah, here you can see all the samples that I went through and then I just bounced this uh, and I ended up with a single uh, bus. And there it is. And then this is just a click uh, for uh, more transient power. And there's just a pad to help with the melodic uh, aspect. Right. And uh, I also have a siren going on with that. That adds more tension again. Some straight up vengeance vocals. Yeah. Come selector. I just found that sample and thought, yeah, let's use it. <laughs> and this is quite a rare occurrence. Uh, uh, I've actually not bounced a growl. So this is a growl that I made in Vital, and in fact, I can actually well, show you. <laughs> so there it is. I haven't even saved this. This is, uh, that's, you know, that's pretty bad. So yeah, there's a bunch of things uh, like uh, oscillators and a compressor and a distortion. Uh, and yeah, it's just it's just been a really long time since I since I last opened this. So yeah, I can't quite remember a bunch of things. But uh, this without the compressor and the distortion, I know will sound pretty uneventful. So yeah, this is just and then an EQ here on top and a destructor as well. And that's how you get the end result of that. And let's F12 for good measure. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go back and just use that. Bam, 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 bam. And then I believe I automated a value over here. Yeah, oscillator two and oscillator three weight frame. So it would go like oh, no, 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 right? See this going up? No, 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 no. And there's another one here, na 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 na. And then I also did a, a panning automation. 
So the growl pans one way, and then the arp uh, that's right below it pans the other. So when the growl is left, the pad is right, and, and when the growl is right, the pad is left, as you can see here. So you get with like this exchanging back and forth feeling. And then some, ah, the classic bejeweled twist breath sample that I like to use and abuse. I <laughs> just use it everywhere. Uh, some more Hypernova samples, I believe. And then uh, I sampled the original uh, once again. So just for the ARPs. Uh, these are some Nair pads, I believe. And then the same... Same uh, double layer panned morph chord reese. That's a mouthful. Rolls up the tongue. But in this case, it's been high passed. And yeah. Um, an incoming razor. And a sub drop. Yeah. And then this is the, the same. Uh, same layers as before, but now uh, we're just on a four on the floor kick pattern, and that and 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 that is uh, good enough to warrant that uh, extra bit of variation that we need for the coda for for the uh, the last uh, eight bars of the growly part of the drop before we move on to the onto the melodic break, which is going to be totally different. So yeah, for for these last uh, eight bars, we just need uh, this is enough to. Uh, this is, uh, this is enough uh, variation. And then now uh, in this recess, please stop saving, FL. You're saving like every th three seconds. That's like unhealthy and unnecessary, bro. So we're doing B flat first. And then we're doing this F. And uh, so, so the B flat can come in at the first chord in the melodic break. So we're like delaying that cadence again, right? Delaying the payoff. And now we're getting arguably into the most interesting part of the song. This is where the real reminiscence of the No Return uh, vibe happens. So, I'm going to play to you uh, the original No Return, and uh, let's uh, hear the melodic part, uh, like uh, where these uh, arps appeared in the original. So let's go through that real quick. So there it is. These are like in, in melody form. These are just like a regular melody uh, line. Uh, uh, and this is also slower because this uh, this is in 150 BPM. The, it, the original was like 142 or something, if I recall correctly. But here, basically what I did is I took that melody and I turned it into an ARP melody hybrid. So we have uh, two layers here. Uh, this is the first one. That's the one you're seeing here. So that's a square on serum. Square saw, actually. And it has, uh, like that, really fast pitch uh, pitch automation for, like, pew effect. Pew, 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 right? Without it, it would sound like this. It, it sounds more basic. It sounds like a regular square. But with it... It adds this like really pew, uh, like gun, uh, gun finger feeling to it. Uh, uh, and then we have the square and we have uh, a more detuned uh, saw. Sorry, but why is Alien Weapon playing in my brain? <laughs> 
<laughs> That's actually kind of fair. To be honest, I, I, I did take a little bit of inspiration from, from Alien Weapon. It's, to be honest, one of my favorite uh, AU5 tracks to this day, so yeah. But, uh, there's, uh, there's, the, yeah, it's, yes, it's the same key, but there are tons of songs in D minor, like, D minor is just a key of many keys. Like, the, uh, the original No Return from five years ago is in D minor. Like, Hellion Weapon is not the reason why this track is D minor, it's the original, uh, No Return, w which came out three years before Alien Weapon. And yes, this this melody is also like five years old. But yes, if you take uh, the art part of it, you can see just the melody. And uh, at the same time, if you uh, solo uh, the arps and you mute out the melody, well, you end up uh, with, uh, you know, just the arps. So yeah, uh, shift alt and that's for another moment, Lex. So yeah, I just took uh, the melody from the second drop of the original and I just like remade it like in a faster, uh, like with a faster pacing, uh, right? So like uh, in 1 16th form and as an ARP melody hybrid and, and with two layers. So we have like the square part of it and the detune saw part of it. And that would be the complete sound. Now we have another uh, octave higher here. And then with this uh, come some super saws. So we actually have two octaves of super saws here. We have the high, uh, the high octave, which is the louder one. This is where most of the uh, this is where the more important notes are. Just, uh, they're playing, uh, they're playing one eighth notes. And uh, then there's the, the lower layer of the super sauce. It's doing pretty much the same, but an octave lower. And these super sauce just have a bit of a high pass, slight dip at 500 ish, and then an OTT just to really compress them and make them like saucy and grady, powerful. And yeah, when you put them both together, uh, it sounds uh, like this. Oh, and yeah, we have another layer here. This is uh, an AU5 trans uh, saw sample. And this just acts as like a... Uh, it's a bass octave. And this um and this adds a little bit of extra motion to the super saw. And yeah, that adds a little bit of extra like moving uh, like back and forth. And then uh, with the super saws there are some more layers. This is some hyperverb from my hypernova pack, superverb from my supernova pack, some more hyperverb, and more hyperverb. 
And these are some growls that I sampled from my track with Vital Mode Color Ringtone. That's for like the growly, uh, yeah, that's just to add a growly layer to the super sauce. You know, uh, more motion in the, in the mid end without it. Right, you get that, uh, that like extra motion. And then there's a razor here. That's just doing uh, one eighth notes again. And this up, right? And then the drums, kick, impacts, rights, and some close hi hats. I think this is just a, a a preset with every single hi hat from Xylens Power Pack One laid out on an FPC patch. And then yeah. I made that patch, and that's just like a very like, like fast. And uh, yeah, uh, at the uh, end of the melodic break, we have some more 808s and some more. And then we have this piano uh, coming in. No, this, this is telling you that song is coming to an end when more instruments are coming in. It's basically reprising the same melody. Maybe with the, uh, with the occasional extra harmonic here and there. None. And it has this extra no. So without it, it would just sound the same as the ARP. And with it, that just adds like that little bit extra of harmonic. No, no. And then we have that choir to really make it cinematic, you know? And then that final choir being much louder than before. For that like final dominant like five to one uh, cadence, that perfect cadence. This last set of growls, this is just a pad fading in for the outro. And then this delay is coming from this growl cluster. That just has like a very, very long uh, delay automation. And yes, I did use the entire mixer. Just so seeing on, on the bottom right, I, I filled up the entire mixer for this. So yeah. <laughs> And then we also have some additional samples. These are from Glitch with Friends. Awesome samples, to be honest. You should download Glitch with Friends too. I believe the pack is free, which is like an absolute travesty. Like this is, it's a steal, bro. You, you should totally, you should totally charge for Glitch with Friends. Those of you who are making this, this pack. Yeah. Absolutely amazing pack. Like there's, there's like so many like nice cinematic glitches effects that I did add a ton of delay for that with the feedback not being like extremely high. The feedbacks are like 90% you're seeing there on, on the top left. Uh, so yeah, this added with all these other layers. And then with the same impacts from the intro. So it's almost like the song comes full circle, right? So uh, you could start, like say uh, the song starts around here, right? Mm, right, so that's us. If 
uh, the song, like, you could loop this entire song back and forth. Like, see this. Right, so the the song was made in a way that it could like it's a cycle because it because you know what it says in, in here the cycle begins anew. This track is made to be looped indefinitely because it ends the same way that it started. And they have some uh, reverb claps and some more agent uh, samples, I believe. Right. And these are some pads that I pulse stretch from another cinematic experiment of mine. And then a distorted lead. And doing the third, minor third. And there's some, uh, some background effects also from Glitch with Friends. Yeah, I believe these are... For some reason, these are not uh, the right pitch. Whatever. So yeah, like, for, for some reason, these seem to be wrong, but let's skip over that. <laughs> Oh, it's this one. Pretty sure like this was supposed to be high passed. Some point there. So anyway. And then we have this, uh, this outro plug. This is also from Dune, I believe. No, it's actually a patcher with serum. So this is a basic song, uh, sine wave, but it has some extra effects like a distortion, chorus, delay, reverb, and filter. That's what makes it sound a, that's what gives it some extra harmonics. It makes it sound a little bit more cinematic. You're not actually seeing this because uh, the plugins that are inside of patcher, for some reason, they don't show up here in the capture for uh, from OBS. And, this, and, and it also has a crystallizer in there, so just know that. Uh, and what these are doing is the same melody from the intro. So again, the song's coming full circle. Na 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 But now it's doing it at half tempo. Na 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 And then the... Drones doing that. No, I think I know why. Why these are okay. When I first opened this project, it, it was using like 23 gigabytes of RAM, and my laptop has 32. So like with all the streaming software on top, the computer was literally running out of memory. Like at one point, the screens went black because it no longer had enough memory to keep the screens alive. So uh, um, I found that this outro w was using uh, a like full like four hour long pause stretch sample that was like a four gigabyte WAV file, and that's where most of the RAM was going. And so I had to make unique as sample all of these. And so that might mean that these have been unlinked to the respective automations here, right? And that is uh, and that is probably why why we're having this problem. So uh, this just happened uh, right before the stream. So. Don't worry about that. This all fixed in the in the final. Just, and then we have na na. And then another one na. And we have uh, that noise downlifter just to signal the end. And then ambient drone for the end. Yeah. And actually, uh, what's cool about this, uh, we're, we're basically done with the song, so if you have any more questions b before we jump into the mixing and, and mastering part, that's going to be pretty quick. Uh, 
fire him right now. While I tell you that uh, this actually isn't uh, the, the first version of No Return Reboot. Uh, this is actually a shortened version because uh, the original was five minutes long. Uh, so basically the intro and the outro were like slightly longer, right? Uh, and so what uh, they asked me was, hey, uh, we feel like the intro and the outro are too long. Maybe, maybe you can shorten them. And that's exactly what I did. And that's why you see here, this is the Ophelia cut. And there's actually another arrangement here that's called the original cut. And this has a slightly longer intro and outro. And we can, uh, so like, as you can see, it has, uh, the, the Ophelia cut has had some stuff, well, cut from the intro. And, and we can actually listen to what, what the original cut sounded like. So it basically had some more things going on in the intro. It's time. Right? So the song starts here in the original cut at about 12 seconds. And just by cutting all this stuff in the intro, I, I managed to cut it down by pretty much half. By only making it just one, one big fade in as opposed to two. What's the easiest way to shorten intro and outro? I always find a huge task, task to short my track because of all the, all the, the automation. Well, yeah, you, you will have to rearrange things around and like uh, retime some things, but just think about the parts that aren't absolutely important, absolutely core to your song. So I, I just thought, what was, what is the absolute core of the song? The parts that the song absolutely cannot live without. And it's basically this. The center of the song, the the intro, the cinematic verse, the build up, and the drop, and and the melodic part of the drop. These two uh, these two parts, uh, I just found that they just were a little bit too long. The, the pads went on for too long, and uh, I cut some length out of them, and uh, I just uh, went ahead. Uh, so there's this thing on the playlist that you can select and hit Control Delete, and it will. And it will basically remove that part of the playlist for you. And it will move all the automations with it, right? We're not doing that here, obviously, because this is a finished project. But that's pretty, that's pretty much the basis of what I did. So I just took the, uh, I took the paths that were uh, too short, uh, too, too long. I cut them and then uh, I removed the empty bit of playlist. So, so everything else would move according to uh, the timing of the project. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Let's open up the mixing and mastering project now, which is probably uh, bound to take much less uh, RAM. So yeah. Director's cut. Yeah, no, but, but yeah, I didn't want to straight up remove uh, the first cut. So I basically cloned uh, the arrangement and I did the cuts there. So I could retain both the original five minute version and the Ophelia cut, which is the final version that you're seeing. All right, it's gonna take a while and there it is. So we have the No Return Reboot uh, mixing and mastering project here. Very, very basic stuff. Basically what I did is just, uh, so just to make sure that I was cutting peaks the right way and that everything was uh, like all the leveling and the multiband dynamics were where I want them to be. Uh, I just exported uh, the instruments only as stems. Let's take off the limiter and everything else here. Makes down for a thousand? DM me, bro. <laughs> you need a mix down? I'm your guy. I'm a professional, like, I'm an actually, like, certified sound technician. I studied for this shit. I got a diploma, bro. <laughs> But yeah, no, I'm, I'm like actually a certified advanced sound, uh, sound technician, uh, studied in a school here. And I am like legally like certified to do your mix downs. Certified SSL console toucher. <laughs> I don't actually have an SSL console at home, but my audio interface is an SSL. It's an SSL 2 plus. Pretty good sound. Like I'm, I'm, I'm using it right now and Pretty clean output. 
So I just exported the instrumental only, uh, like without the sub, then I exported the sub only. Then I exported the kick only, the snare only, and then uh, the hats and the rest of the stuff with some more perks. Like this is where all the cinematic perks went and then only the crash symbols. This way I had a like slightly more split uh, mix down to work with. So I just exported group stems and uh, that's how I usually uh, like do the final mixing and mastering stuff. For the instruments, I just wanted to make sure that uh, that like all the peaks were being cut. And so you see all these, all these like peaks and inconsistencies here. So, so I basically wanted to get rid of these. So the waveform would be a, a little bit smoother. And so uh, when it comes to the limiter, the limiter doesn't have to work as hard. So we're basically uh, having a glue compressor here with the catch the peaks preset. I like to use that quite a bit. And so anytime there's this uh, loud peak, the glue will activate. See how it's activating there ever so slightly. And then here again. And again there. And then again, there just a little bit. And then uh, all the rest is being taken care of by this Pro C2 right after the glue compressor. So see how I'm doing the slightest bit of compression, like minus 1.2 at most. And that's just going to like smooth out uh, this weight form. So by the time it arrives at the limiter, it has less inconsistencies and in, in, in volume less peaks and uh, the limiter has to work less to achieve louder results. And then this is just like tonal balancing EQ, like very broad strokes, lift a little bit of the 90 Hertz, dip the 600, like dip this section. Kind of pretty nasally there. And then just uh, like do really slight adjustments. Uh, the sub, basically pro mb the whole sub so it would stay like nice and compressed and like all the same level throughout and then with parametric eq2 i uh basically turned down everything below like 30 hertz because this this area like i'm not using it there's no 20 hertz in this song the sub goes from like 30 30 ish hertz up so if there's any artifacts here, I don't want them. I want to get rid of them. And then there was this pocket of mud at 120. I just wanted to get rid of. What's your hot, hard cutoff for sub frequency? As I said, it's about, uh, it starts to fall off at about 25 Hertz. Because uh, realistically, you're not going to be using subs below 25 Hertz. That's just too low for like most headphones. And then for the drums, I just made sure that I was getting the right uh, the right frequencies for the kick. So I made sure to lift 40 something hertz for the kick. That was like the fundamental frequency of the kick. Made sure to lift that a little bit so the kick will be a little bit more punchy throughout. Uh, then there's some EQ on the hats and a Pro MB to... Uh... So this is mainly used in the, in the cinematic drums here. That's where in this uh, low-end uh, Pro MB comes into play. And then for the crashes, I just uh, made sure that the levels stay rather consistent. So this crash is going to act on the electronic crashes, uh, crashes, I believe. Just the tiniest bit. See that? Just to make sure the high end doesn't go too much overboard. And then the mastering chain, we've got uh, a mastering EQ like the just the tiniest adjustments it the the main thing is this slight dip on 2k ish it sounds like this uncomfortable right so we'd rather get rid of that a little bit and then there's the sooth that uh tames these frequencies uh mostly like the 5k 6ks it's very quiet but it's there and then there's an EQ here that just, uh, it's, this is basically like, like an anti-aliasing filter. It, it's just a hard uh, high pass at just 20K. So it's gonna make sure that no aliased frequencies from anything come across. Uh, and then there's uh, an ozone dynamics for the multiband compression. 
as you're seeing this is just making sure that the low end stays pretty like sausaged and and just any other sound that might uh, come across that's like too peaky or too loud like peaks up a little bit too much making sure that it all stays nice and smooth and, and consistent uh, and then an imager to adjust the stereo space I actually ended up not doing anything here that's that's pretty weird I must have done at least like this like this uh, that low end not a ring this might be because I, I I had to reinstall ozone so it might have reset the preset but reset the preset anyway Nitro 2020 <laughs> Welcome, add time indeed, but it, it helps me. It helps support me and keep the lights on. So yeah, if you buy Ozone 9, can you get the Ozone Dynamics for free? It comes with Ozone 9, so yeah. And then it has like the tiniest amount of OTT. Yes, OTT on the master, all right? But A, it has no upward compression, so it's only going to compress down. And like the tiniest amount, 7%. And also very fast because the time offset is only 40%. So, yeah, we just F12, please. There's a ton of stuff going on. So there it is. OTT is just multiband. Yeah, but it, there's there's some additional, like, if you were to dump this into Plugin Doctor, you can see that there's, uh, it, it does do some tonal shaping, some EQing, and it does affect the impulse response a little bit. Uh, but yeah, and then we come into this limiter, which is just the main bread and butter of the mastering. This is what's going to maximize the track to uh, go up to zero dB. So, so before and after. And then right after the uh, right after that invisible limiter, I've got a Pro L2 uh, 2 to make sure this doesn't distort in in the analog domain. So that's why I have a true peak limiter going on. So invisible limiter uh, does not have a true peak function. So I just make sure like there's no gain boost on Pro L. There's there's no maximizing going on. All I'm doing with Pro L is l limiting this to minus 0 0.1 dB true peak. So like in the analog domain. If you notice, it's see like the the tiniest the tiniest red lines. Those are the very slight adjustments that it's doing. So just to make sure that the true peak max never goes above the value that I've established. See it there, minus zero point one. And at the same time, I can get the. Uh, LEFS quite loud, so so around minus three on the really big part where there's a where there's a ton of stuff going on. Maximum is around yeah minus three. Seventy to minus zero point one or minus zero point two better. It doesn't really matter. The difference is, is, is not that much. Like just minus 0 0.1 will do. There's no need to do minus 0 0.2, minus 0 0.2. I do 0 0.2 for the MP3 conversion. Nah, like you've you've got to, like, if you want an MP3 to not to not go above zero when, when, when doing the conversion, you have to limit it to like at least minus one true peak. Cause the MP3 like really messes up the peaks and like goes quite high. Uh, what was the process in, in terms of getting it released on, on Ophelia Records? Uh, I've actually explained this uh, at the beginning. I basically uh, had a contact uh, who uh, I reached out to and uh, I, uh, like, he, he knew some of the people at Ophelia and I asked him to do an introductory email for, for me and I said, hey, just, uh, just introduce them to me and I'll take it from there. And I sent them like three IDs, and of all those three um, IDs, it actually, t it was actually like surprising to see that they took uh, no return reboot. Like I was expecting them to take another one, uh, but yeah, <laughs> it just went on from there, and yeah, like the whole thing happened through email, and yeah. <laughs> what is this production stream? Is a perfect place to learn final mastering, uh, and like. If you want longer, like more detailed versions of this, please book a one-on-one -on -one lesson. <laughs>
how do you usually approach loud, loud mixes? Like I said, first, like cut peaks, maximize. Cut peaks, maximize. Cut peaks, maximize. So, like see all these inconsistencies. You've got to ax all these peaks and then you can maximize. And that's basically what is happening with all these glue compressors, the proces, and then the limiter. Uh, so yeah, just cut peaks, maximize. That's how you like... Uh, that's a way that you can visually, uh, visually imagine how I how I usually go about that. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that's about it, guys. Thank you all so much for joining me on this uh, No Return Reboot Project Breakdown. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>